Great, thank you. Well, um, good afternoon, everybody. And my name is Judy Stewart. I work with the Business Career Center for UConn. And I am thrilled to welcome you today and thrilled to welcome our employer guest today, which is Amazon. So before I introduce uh, our Amazon uh, guests, I just wanted to say, I know that you know, all of you know what Amazon is. I just wanted to mention a quick, a couple of quick um, facts about Amazon. Amazon now is 25 years old. Amazon started in 1995, just selling books. Some of us do remember that. Um, and this is what I learned today. Um, Amazon owns 41 subsidiaries and brands, some of which I just learned today. Amazon owns Zappos, which is a very big shoe site. Um, most of you know that Amazon owns Whole Foods, Audible, and some other well-known brands that you may or may not know that Amazon um, owns. Um, and the other thing that I uh, wanted to say is as a student, if you are not already um, an Amazon customer, you can also, there is a, a very generous student discount to sign up for Prime. So just a little commercial for that. Anyway, without further ado, I want to introduce, and I guess we can, we have three guests from Amazon. So Brian, do you want to raise your hand? Brian Bushy, there he is. And uh, Brian actually is from Connecticut. He went to Eastern Connecticut University. Brian was a basketball coach. He worked for, for a few other logistics companies and joined Amazon about a year ago. Um, Talib Fisher, you are here somewhere. Um, okay, we will, I don't see him, but I heard that he's with us, but maybe I'm not seeing him right, right now. Anyway, Talib is actually a 2020 UConn alumni, and uh, he joined Amazon uh, right after he graduated last May. And last but not least is Priscilla Fisher, who is also on this phone. Priscilla went to Wayland Baptist University. Um, she had a few different careers, including in academics, et cetera, and joined um, Amazon within the last year. So Priscilla is also joining us. Um, and, and Brian, thanks for inviting these two um, students or other ambassadors, because like you, their path to Amazon was very different. It wasn't a traditional path. So again, we are thrilled to have you. And so, um, yeah. Judy, real quick. Um, it looks like both Talib and Priscilla are having some challenges getting into the room. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure what's causing that, but I'm gonna ask both of them to try and rejoin right now and see if we can't get them mm -hmm. into the room. Okay, great. Thank you for letting me know. Um, okay. Um, how about we chat a little bit while they are getting into the room? Is that okay, Brian? Yeah, absolutely. More than happy to answer any questions. And by the way, at any point, um, either chat or let us know again um, if they're still having issues. Here it mm -hmm. is. It says that Talib's in the lobby. Yep, I let her in. Okay. I think Talib is a he, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, I think so. Okay, great. Okay. And thanks again to all the students that have joined us live today and all the students who will be watching this. Yay, Talib has joined us. Hello. Okay. So just as a reintroduction, Talib is a Yukon School of Business alum. Talib graduated in May of 2020 and he was a marketing major. Um, and what I said before Talib is that everybody's path to get to Amazon was different. So we're thrilled to have you. Welcome and to hear your story today. Okay. So Brian, if you just want to kick, a, kick it off, uh, overview about Amazon, anything you want to start with, um, we're all good. We're, we're all yours. 
Absolutely. Thank you so much, Judy, for having us. Now, um, not sure if anyone here has attended any of my past sessions with UConn, but I'm so glad to have any repeat attendees and so glad to have uh, many new attendees with us today. So as Judy alluded to, there is some quite a few unique things that Amazon does. When we all think about Amazon, the first thing we think about is those packages put on the front doorsteps all across the country every single day. So I am looking for people right now to type in the chat room real quick. Uh, if you are a Prime member, type me in the chat room, M-E. See, quite a, quite a few Prime members. Yes, I, I think that that's almost a requirement going through college at this point. It is so convenient being Prime members. And that's really the first thing that all of us think about when we think about Amazon. But Judy said it, Amazon does so many cool and unique and different things. So uh, they have all of the... I'm thinking I'm getting a little bit of feedback from someone. But uh, they have uh, the Prime Services, Echo, Amazon Fresh, Amazon Go, Whole Foods. But they've got some really unique platforms for sellers. So if you're looking to sell your goods on Amazon, they've got some really unique tools in place for that. They've also got a lot of great tools in place when it comes to publishing works of art, whether that be movies or books or poems, lots of very cool things in place. And lastly, they also do a lot in the cloud space, so the Amazon Web Services space. So they do a lot um, online web hosting, hosting data for major corporations all across the country, including the United States government, including many major leagues like MLB baseball, um, NHL, NFL, all use the Amazon cloud. Now I'm going to kick it to Talib and have Talib tell us a little bit about what he does in his role as an area manager. Everyone, my name is Talib Fisher. Um, like Judy said earlier, I was a UConn graduate. I graduated in May. I was actually a dual major in marketing and communications. Um, currently, I am a area manager in the Stowe department. Um, and what that basically is, is I work in a fulfillment center. And um, my role is to um, lead associate who are stowing Amazon or soon to be Amazon products um, into uh, what we call pods, which is like our inventory system um, uh, so that we can get those orders ready for customers to order. So Talib, I know you, you talk about pods. Uh, now, how are those pods moved around the warehouse? I think everyone may find that fascinating. So you have something called an AR floor, um, and the pods are, are set on these drives, drive units. Um, and so there are these, these little, um, you can think of them as like mechanized, um, those little uh, robot vacuum cleaners. Um, but the pod sits on, on one of those, and then they drive around to the stations um, for our, our stowers to stow into, uh, later to be picked out and, and to be put into or customer orders. Yeah, very, very cool. Talib owns a process that is very early in the product life cycle. Customers usually have not ordered what his team is taking and putting away on these pods in many of our different fulfillment centers. Now, from there, it goes off to the pickers who then pick that item off of those pods that rides a lot of cool conveyor belts. Very cool if you ever get a chance to see inside an Amazon warehouse. They are loud, but they move very quickly. Go down to those pack stations, get put into boxes, and then loaded onto trucks. And those trucks eventually make their way down to me. I work in a delivery station. So Talib's building is about 1.5 million square feet. My building is about 250,000 square feet where I service um, Western Massachusetts, Northern Connecticut. I sort all of those packages into what we call 
totes and then load them up onto those prime vans and deliver packages all across the Northeast. It's a whole lot of fun, but there are lots of different roles and opportunities that fall under the area manager uh, umbrella. And really you get to look at so many different parts of the business. So uh, Talib is a great example of now, he really didn't start in like operations management or a, a truly like supply chain type of degree where still very, very successful as an area manager down at BDL3 in New Haven. Um, so you use so many of those skills on a daily basis while at Amazon. Uh, and a lot of it is in that communication, having that business sense, having an idea of what is the best course of action, that bias for action, one of the 14 leadership principles that both of us live by every single day. So lots of very cool and unique opportunities for you to use your degree and use what you have learned um, going through college as an area manager. And if you know long term, you'd like to move into that marketing or into HR or into finance. Absolutely can kind of stretch your wings in the area manager role and start to understand the the role that those departments play in your job on a day-to-day -day basis. And then as opportunities open up, there are so many places that you can apply for and sit down and potentially interview for. So uh, as Talib will tell you, there are uh, job postings posted all over the place and you can choose to, to make a move, whether it be across the country or into a different department, uh, pretty much at the drop of a hat and start working in that direction. I think that's one of the coolest things about Amazon. It's such a huge company. Uh, there really are a lot of opportunities for you to learn new things, try new things, try different departments. Um, in fact, um, I went through my first Prime Week um, about two weeks ago, and something cool that we did was um, all the area managers volunteered in different departments. Like I was in PAC for a day, um, actually, you know, putting products into boxes so that they could be shipped off, um, even though I was a STO AM. So definitely a lot of cool um, opportunities for you to, you know, grow inside the company and, and move to different departments. So that's really, really good to hear to Talib and Brian about the career opportunities. And again, between Amazon and 41 subsidiaries and all these businesses, I would think that that's, you know, a wonderful career path. But can you uh, tell us a little bit more about what the process is to apply for the area manager and, you know, what does the interviewing process look like and what kind of candidates um, are you looking for? Great, great question. So uh, I will tell you that with COVID happening, COVID-19 happening, we've moved all of our interviews into a virtual space. We use a program called Amazon Chime. Uh, it's a program that the operation uses, the whole entire organization uses on a daily basis. Uh, I bet you, Talib, like myself, have Chime downloaded onto our phones. Uh, but it is a program where it's very similar to Zoom, where you are going to sit down and have two operations interview. So you're going to interview with two separate uh, leaders on the floor, whether they be local or they could be all the way across the country. That's the benefit of having these virtual interviews. Uh, but if you're interested, can definitely share a link with everyone as to where to go, where to apply to become an area manager in the Northeast. Now, if you are sitting on this call and you are potentially interested in working somewhere else, wherever that may be, the Midwest, the Southwest, the West Coast, um, the Northwest, absolutely connect with me on LinkedIn. I would love to share that link with you. Uh, but 
knowing that everyone here goes to Yukon. Hopefully you've fallen in love with the Northeast, fallen in love with the snow and the fall and all that fun stuff and want to stay in the Northeast. But if there is uh, an area that you are absolutely dying to go work in, I, I want to get you there. And the cool thing is Amazon will help with relocation costs. So if you decide you want to move across the country, potentially move away from uh, any family members that you have here for whatever reason, Amazon will absolutely help you pay for that and help cover some of those costs. So uh, don't let financial reasons be the reason why you choose not to apply to the area that you would be happiest working in. Great. So you mentioned Chime, which is like Zoom, but mm -hmm. is part of it also like a, um, a a behavioral interview, like Higher View or something like that, um, um, or is it different for every person? So I will say that the bulk of our interview questions are situational interview questions where we are looking for an example from your past. Uh, we find that asking hypothetical um, scenarios where uh, you have not been in that situation, uh, you're going to potentially give us what we want to hear, not what you would naturally do. And Talib will tell you, Amazon is such a fast paced environment. Things change so fast and so frequently that we have to act like that. And you don't have time to formulate what you think is going to be the best answer. You have to really kind of grab that data that you have and, and use your gut and kind of run with it. Um, so we find that by asking what has happened in the past, we get a lot more true picture of what future behavior will be. Got it. Thank you. So Talib, since you went through this in the last year, um, what led you to Amazon? Because you didn't do a summer internship there or have a traditional path. What led you to Amazon? and um, tell us about how you found the process. Um, so like I said, I dual majored in marketing communications and I really wanted to do something where I was using my majors. Um, I did an inter uh, internship with Amazon. Um, I actually did a summer internship with a company called Altria. Um, but, you know, I wasn't really feeling the work. Um, so I wanted to try something new. Um, so. Uh, in the process of applying for uh, full-time opportunities for after graduation, one of the most important things I did was I uploaded my LinkedIn. And then a couple of weeks after I did that, um, one of the recruiters from Amazon reached out to me and said, hey, um, we think that you would be really uh, good for a role in the area management role. Um, here's an application link. Um, I applied using that link. Uh, then I believe the next day I, I got an interview um, request. Um, and then it was, you know, two uh, video interviews. Um, like he said, it was over time. And yes, a lot of the, the questions were situational based on the experiences that I put on my resume. Um, so it was, I thought it was very straightforward because I was just talking about things that I've already done in my past. Um, and I, I, I definitely um, appreciate the fact that they weren't asking me like, uh, you know, how many windows are in the Empire State Building or, you know, any crazy questions like that. Um, it was definitely a lot of, um, hey, um, here are our core values. How do your experiences match up with these core values? How do you exhibit living those core values in your day-to-day -day life? Okay, thank you. Um, so Brian, you mentioned the area manager and I believe if I'm not mistaken, that you're recruiting both for summer internships as well as full-time positions. Is that accurate for the students yeah. that are? with yes. us or we'll listen afterwards. That is that is absolutely accurate. And I'm actually here recruiting for three different kinds of summer internships. So um, if you're sitting here listening to this video either now or after the fact, I will say uh, if you're interested in the area manager role, you love interacting with people, you love kind of deep diving that data, making sure that you are meeting the needs of our customers, 
Absolutely. Apply for the area manager role. It's a lot of fun. I uh, selfishly believe that it is the most fun role at Amazon. It, literally, there are no two days that are the same. Uh, but if you are interested in applying for a summer internship, I am going to put another link in the chat room, um, which will uh, not only bring up the area manager internship role, uh, but it will also bring up the uh, HR internship role. So if you want to get into human resources, great way to get your foot in the door. Um, if you're interested in loss prevention, it will bring up the link to the uh, loss prevention internship. And if you're interested in safety, it will bring up the link to um, the safety internship. Now, I will say you have to be a junior going into your senior year to apply for an internship. We don't offer internships after you graduate as a senior. We don't offer internships for master's students in the operation. Now, there are other corporate internships that you could explore. Those are roles that I do not typically recruit for, but if you wanna check out those opportunities, you can check out amazon.jobs for any uh, master's level internship, um, legal internships, corporate internships, data, uh, data sciences internships, things like that. Absolutely explore Amazon.jobs. Okay, sounds good. Um, so going back to Talib for a second, since you are a, a business school major, um, how would you break down, you know, you, you know, Brian mentioned communications, problem solving, that you deal with financial issues, supply chain issues. If it was a pie, how would you break down, you know, how your time is spent in those different areas? So as a STOW AM, I, I work in um, just the STOW department. I manage about, two, I, well, right now I have 214 associates. Um, so definitely the larger parts of the pie are going to go to that communications and problem solved um, buckets. Um, a lot of what I do day to day is coachings, answering a lot of associate questions that arise, um, and just removing obstacles so that they can be better at their job. I think that's, um, you know, the main reason why area manager is a role at Amazon. Um, yes, Amazon has, you know, millions of customers across the world, um, but the area manager thinks of their associates as their customers. And we have to do um, what they need in order to succeed in their roles and in order for Amazon to succeed as a whole. Um, so definitely communications and that problem solve are going to be, you know, about 50% of that pie. Um, like I said um, before, though, uh, there are a lot of other departments within even the fulfillment center um, that, you know, interlink with the Stowe department. Um, everything runs as like this one um, smooth system from the dock to Stowe to pick to pack um, to delivering outbound. Um, so with that, um, we have to think of Amazon as a business, not just, you know, your department in an isolated um, pod by itself. Um, and so because of that, we find ourselves thinking of, okay, well, if we do X, how will it affect um, this department Y down the line? Um, and so that may sound like it's a it's a, another problem solve um, to be, and, and in some instances it is, um, but it is, um, you know, thinking about that operations um, part of Amazon and trying to smooth out um, the, the, the flow of our business so that we can be more effective at getting our customers their orders. That's great. Thank you. Um, Brian, before we open it up to questions from the students, which you can either put into a chat bar or Perhaps un we can unmute the mics when the time comes. Tricia will help us with that. Um, but Brian, you know, Talib mentioned overseeing 214 associates, which is fantastic. But what kind of training is provided to the area that, managers um, to make them ready for that responsibility? 
That's a great question. Amazon is not a company that's just going to quote unquote throw you to the wolves. Successful for you, it's not successful for us. Uh, so, depending upon the building and the role that you will be taking on as an area manager, there is a program called the Academy, anywhere from eight to 12 weeks, where you start uh, by learning the basics of the operation and Talib will tell you that his first week, his first day in there, he went through what's called safety school. He learned how in an Amazon warehouse and then began to learn the basic functions on how to stow an item and then was built up from there being handed a little piece of the pie every step of the way until about eight to 12 weeks later had everything that was needed to run the operation on a basic level because those one-offs are things that you are going to have to learn kind of on the fly we are always improving always raising the bar and and we do that by learning right uh when we handle upwards of a million packages a day uh you are going to run into defects and issues that you have never run into before. Just, it, it's the way that the universe works. So, uh, but I will say that as you continue and you make it through that academy, you will, uh, you'll have a very good grasp of the operation from start to finish. Now, once you're through the academy, your manager, your boss will sit down and have a conversation with you and start talking about career goals, career objectives, where you see your career at Amazon going, and will work to get you moving in that direction because one of our 14 leadership principles is hire and develop the best. So we don't have that traditional mentorship program uh, that many companies do have because we all believe that we should be mentoring one another because if we are all honestly helping one another get to where we all want to be, Amazon as a whole is gonna continue to improve and continue to get better. Okay, wonderful. So I'm going to start with some of the questions. And as I'm starting that, um, the students uh, and participants that are with us, if you have any others, please feel free. Um, so the first question is, how has the pandemic impacted the internship program? Is it somewhat remote now? Uh, yes, it has impacted the internship program. I think it's impacted all facets of the operation. Um, so depending upon what the world looks like in about seven or eight months is when the decision will be made to move the internship program virtual like it was the past summer or have it 100% on site. Now, this is paid internships where they help with housing, they help with rental cars, and make sure that you are set up for success. So if you're looking to go explore a different city this summer, strongly encourage the internship program. But uh, assuming the world is in the state it is currently in, we are prepared to do a 100% remote internship. I personally am rooting for a on-site internship because as Talib will tell you, you learn so much, so fast at Amazon that uh, being on site really helps you kind of soak all of that in. Yeah, I would think so. Great. So next question. I'm an FBM bookseller on Amazon. Are you able to sell on Amazon as an employee? Yes, you are able to sell on Amazon as an employee. Now, Amazon will uh, ensure that you're not directly handling your own product. So they will work to put you in an area or a fulfillment center that um, does not potentially handle your products. They will try and keep you separate from that. But um, there is probably some cross pollution there, depending upon what you are selling. Uh, with books, it would be pretty easy to kind of put you in a role where you wouldn't be interacting with those books. Uh, but if you're selling something else on Amazon, there may be some of that that bleed over that cross contamination. So uh, not a big deal. There are many Amazon employees that actively sell on Amazon. Okay, thank you. Next question. I'm a first year full-time MBA student and army officer looking to get out in the next year. 
when should I apply to the area manager position? Great question. So if you are looking to start a full-time role anytime between January 1st and September 30th, we strongly encourage you to put in an application now. Uh, so I, being a first year MBA student full-time, I don't know if that's a one-year MBA program or a two-year MBA program. Uh, so if it's a two-year MBA program, I would encourage you to start exploring opportunities next fall. Uh, but if you're looking to jump into a full-time position within that time frame, that uh, January to September time frame, I would encourage you to um, start putting in your application now. Okay, great. And he mentioned that it's a, a two-year program. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, great. Next question. I am a blue badge associate at the BDL2. I guess that's an Amazon facility. Um, I am a picker. I'm looking to apply for the area manager position or any other advanced position. Is there consideration given for associates looking for advanced positions? Also, I'm a master's student in business data analytics. I would like to apply for a master's internship program. Is the internal hire possible for that? So that is a great question. And the answer is yes across the board, but there was a couple different parts to that question. <laughs> so I do wanna say that if you're interested as an associate now at Amazon to move into a, um, internship, an area manager internship role or a full-time area manager role, I would encourage you to speak with the HR department. The reason why I say speak with HR is we have a great program called Campus Next or Campus Now, depending upon what you are applying for, that will um, get you set up for the uh, the interview, there will be some preparation for the interview behind the scenes to make sure that you're successful when you sit down when it comes time for that that internship. So really leverage the tools that are in place for you there. Now, if you are looking to move into a data analytics role, uh, you are already an Amazon employee, which is a great thing and definitely helps that cause because you have access to our internal jobs network. There are job postings that never get posted externally because there is enough demand internally for the position. So. I will say that I encourage you to also leverage HR and help you get onto the internal network that will allow you to uh, look at all the opportunities that are posted internally and check out those uh, data analytics positions that you want to apply for. Okay, that's great to know. Any other questions, everything that you wanted, or ever? Everything you always wanted to know, here it is, excellent. Um, Brian, so what types of experience relate well to Amazon when reviewing resumes and LinkedIn profiles? Great question. Now, I'm actually going to ask Talib a question before I answer that question. Talib, what do you think makes a successful area manager? Um, so, like I said, uh, I, I manage a lot of people. Um, so, definitely being comfortable with face to face interaction, um, answering questions, um, and being in a fast paced environment are all things that are super important with Amazon. Um, also, it helps to be really hungry to learn. Um, when I was onboarded, that 12 week program really felt like an internship um, and you were just like a giant sponge trying to soak everything in. Um, Amazon's going to throw a lot of information at you. There's still um, things that I'm learning and I'm, you know, going into my, my six month on the job. Um, so, so definitely be eager to learn, um, be comfortable with working with others and with your team. Um, and, um, you know, I think that 
uh, researching the 14 Amazon core values um, and then matching your experiences with those values is really going to help you out with, um, you know, reviewing your resume and your LinkedIn account. Absolutely. Great, great answer there. Now, I will say that Tlaib hit it right on the head. Perfect, perfect answer there. Uh, so things that stick out to me on LinkedIn are those work experiences, right? Any work experience you have that's in a fast paced environment. And some people may laugh when they hear this, but I love looking at people who are baristas at Starbucks, uh, working in McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, Taco Bell, uh, because those are such fast paced environments. We've all driven by a McDonald's that's had cars wrapped around the building three times waiting to get their morning coffee. Uh, so those fast paced environments are, they translate so unbelievably well to Amazon. But if you don't have work experience like that, that's perfectly okay. I get excited also seeing people who are resident assistants. They know how to talk to people. Conflict resolution uh, obviously comes from a lot of that. I love seeing people who are tutors. You know how to teach people things. And Talib will tell you, every single day we are going in and we are teaching an associate something, whether it be simply how to stow a box and how to stow a box correctly and make sure that they're following all the things that we have in place, or uh, it could be teaching an associate how to prepare for their first interview. Uh, they may be applying to get promoted into uh, a tier three position, which is like a, almost like an assistant manager position, best way to think of that. Uh, so love seeing tutors, love seeing people who put together volunteer uh, events, work with volunteer organizations, because that means that you fit into that doctor nurse relationship that we preach at Amazon area managers uh, are classified as the nurse and the doctor the one who is actually performing the operation is the associate so anyone who's worked in any sort of volunteer capacity great to see so there's lots of things on your LinkedIn profile that really stick out to me I'll tell you Students that I am least interested to talk to are the students who only have their coursework on LinkedIn. Go out and diversify, whether that's joining clubs, joining organizations, volunteering at events. Like I, I get that college is very, very important, but uh, you gain a lot of experience getting exposure to those extracurriculars. So if you don't, have that and you're sitting on this uh, call right now or you're watching it after the fact, I encourage you to go out and get involved as much as you can. I promise it's a lot of fun going out and volunteering some Saturday morning to pick up the local community or work at a soup kitchen. Uh, and that's something that I would love to hear about in an interview, something I would love to read on LinkedIn. Great. Good. Next question. Um, did either of you take any Six Sigma classes or any other lean process classes prior to application? And is that something that you would recommend? So I will say that I did, but I don't know that I recommend it because as Talib will tell you, that 12 week program is so intensive. You learn so unbelievably much. I mean, 12 weeks feels like a year at any other company because of how much information you are trying to retain all at the same time. So I, I don't want to say that you should go out and take one right now because you're thinking about applying for Amazon. If you've already taken one, that's very valuable experience that you can bring into Amazon. But we have our own version of Lean and Six Sigma that we use every day. And it's taught to every associate from entry level tier one, as we call them, all the way up to an L8 uh, general manager in a building, learns from this, um, goes through the safety school and learns our version of Lean and Six Sigma. Got it. Um, also, Brian, some of the jobs that we see posted, like financial intern and things like that, 
Are those warehouse based? Or are they corporate based? Can you talk a little bit about those jobs? And I know not necessarily what you're recruiting for, but just help us understand those as well. So any of those finance data analytics, um, finance operational rotation program, uh, marketing rotational program, all fall under the corporate umbrella. So the things that fall under the operation umbrella is safety, HR, area manager, loss prevention, an area maintenance manager. Those five things fall under the operation and it's what is expanding the fastest at Amazon and what we have the most openings in. Um, anything else would fall under a corporate um, umbrella. And where are those, cor are the, all the corporate jobs in Seattle? Or are they also in New York? Or just talk to us a little bit about that. Locations can vary, and right now a lot of that is up in the air. I will say that uh, a good rule of thumb is to assume that it is based out of Seattle, uh, but there are corporate positions that uh, up until the beginning of this year were solely based in S Seattle. You had to live in the greater Seattle area that have now moved to a virtual setting where you will do maybe um, – one week every quarter out in Seattle and the rest will be considered virtual and you could work from wherever. Um, so I, I don't want to promise that a position is or is not based in a certain area because things are changing so much in our current environment. Of course. Questions, students, colleagues, anything else? I guess there's only a, a comment that I'd like to make um, is um, for all of us, when we think about our work situations, it's generally, and Talib, I'd like your comments on this, it's generally something that we never saw ourselves doing that might have taught us the greatest lessons or given us the greatest work ethic. So, um, you know, it, it, you know, some of you are finance majors or MBAs or whatever. And, um, you know, when you first hear warehouse fulfillment center, et cetera, you may not think it's the right career path, but Talib, can you comment on that? Um, um, given that you are a marketing and communications major. Uh, Amazon, um, especially in the fulfillment center is definitely not what I saw myself doing um, right after college. I actually went into college biochem for pre-dental because I wanted to be an orthodontist. Um, ended up changing my major about six, seven times um, before settling in um, a business uh, mindset. Um, but once I started working at Amazon um, and working with my associates, um, you know, I, I definitely, uh, a soft spot for it. Um, I really enjoy what I do every day because uh, most of what I'm doing is, again, those coachings and those teachings and, and helping others be better at their jobs. Um, as Brian said, uh, having experience in fast-paced environments helps. My first job was at Burger King. My second job was at McDonald's. So I was definitely um, um, used to, you know, dealing with a lot of people, a lot of um, different, um, you know, attitudes and, and vibes. Um, and so I think those experiences um, definitely were what pushed me into a, an area manager role, um, even though that's not, you know, initially what I thought of myself doing after college. But I'm definitely glad that I, I took the leap and, and hopped on board with Amazon. And the exciting thing is if you're sitting on this call or watching it after the fact and you don't really know what you want to do, what kind of direction you want to take your career in, that's perfectly understandable. Very tough to make that decision, especially at 21, 22 years old. I would encourage you to explore the area manager opportunity. The reason being is you are exposed to so many different roles within the business that you can kind of decide, you know what, I want to gear my next step towards moving into recruiting, or I want to move into HR, or I want to move into safety, or I want to move into a corporate position. So many different roles are 
opened up to you that uh, if you don't know where you want to go, I would strongly encourage Amazon. Got it. Um, my last question, can you talk a little bit because you're 24 seven in these warehouses, uh, like what is a typical schedule? Is it evenings? Is it weekends? What does that look like? So Tilly, what does your schedule look like right now? Well, back half days. So I work um, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then I have um, Sunday through Tuesday off. Um, and then those are going to be um, 11 hour shifts usually. Yep. So usually it's uh, it's about a six in the morning until maybe five o'clock at night kind of schedule. If you're working in one of our larger fulfillment centers and who can argue with getting three days off every single week. Now I work in a delivery station where the roles are a little bit different. So I actually share the same days that I typically work. I typically work Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, but my day starts at three o'clock in the morning and ends about two o'clock in the afternoon. So same amount of time, just a little bit different of a start time. And I will say that traditionally, um, most people come in and they work. I, I always say it's best to plan on seven to seven, uh, whether it be seven in the morning to seven at night or seven at night to seven in the morning, four days a week. Um, and if you're sitting on this call and you're like, I can't work night shift. I promise you that when I was Tlaib's age and I, I walked across that stage, if you told me that I would be working night shift, I would have taken that degree and walked in the other direction as fast as I could and called you crazy. But um, I don't know if I was caught at a weak moment, but I said yes to night shift. And it was probably the best decision I ever made. I actually found that one, I enjoy working night shift. Um, and two, Amazon changes so fast and so frequently that if you're on night shift and you don't wanna be there, you're not gonna be there longer than three to six months. And I promise you, anyone here can work night shift for three to six months. The worst week is the first week, your sleep schedule adjusts, it becomes a very easy transition and then uh, you can potentially move back to a day shift if that's your goal, or you can fall in love with night shift like me and be more than happy to stay there. Great. Great. And that's why we get our packages so quickly <laughs> because of people like you that work 12 hour shifts and diligently work around the clock to get our packages to us. Um, so if no other questions, Brian and Talib, I want to thank you very, very much. Um, we are re always thrilled to have Amazon. You are such a great partner. We actually have so many students that work for you all over the country. So um, we're thrilled to keep getting the word out there. Um, if anybody has any questions afterwards, I think you gave a lot of links in the chat to how people, um, Brian said to uh, uh, catch up with him on LinkedIn, to leave, I'm just going to throw you into the mix also. <laughs> As a UConn alum, sometimes, you know, they want to hear from you about your experiences. So if no other questions, um, I want to thank you on behalf of UConn and um, keep up the great work. And um, everybody who's uh, listening afterwards, um, everybody have a good day. Okay. Thank you all. Okay. Thank bye -bye. you, everyone. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you.